Dr. K.K. Sharma retired as Professor of Pharmacology, Head of the Department and Acting Principal of University College of Medical Sciences, Delhi. A pharmacologist of about 35 years standing a, and his major interest has been neuropharmacology. He is a member of the Council of the National Academy. Please go ahead and your time allotted, as you know, is is 20 minutes, but I'll appreciate if you make it short and do it in 15. A good teacher can always do it. Please go ahead. Of the neural transmitter fun uh, systems, they function independent of each other as well as integrating with each other. If we cause loss of one system, it will not allow the other system to work less. Rather, they will try to compensate. Most of these ARAS neurons produce low voltage, fast frequency activity as told by Dr. Mohan Kumar in the EEG and increase muscle tone in the AMG and diffusely activate the cortex and other forebrain regions. NREM, NREM sleep is mainly driven by the neurons in the pre-optic area and various neurotransmitters which subserve this function is GABA and to some extent other neuropeptides like encephalins and galenin. All three are inhibitory neuropeptides. REM sleep is regulated primarily by neurons in the pons with additional influence arising from the lateral hypothalamus by using neurotransmitters, acetylcholine, monomines, GABA, melanin concentrated hormone which interact and with glutamate or GABA in neurons of the sublateral dorsal nucleus which is also known as the uh, sub ceruleus because it is situated just below the uh, uh, locus ceruleus which project to the ventromedial medulla and ventral horn of the spinal cord providing pathways through which they may inhibit the motor neurons and decrease the atonia, uh, produce atonia or decrease muscle tone during the REM sleep. Uh, so, REM sleep. Activation of the SLD region elicits atonia and REM sleep like EEG activity. It is also known as the paradoxical sleep because they, it, they, it has got the characteristic of the EEG that is low voltage, fast activity uh, amplitudes and that's why its EEG activity is similar to the um, wakeful state. Then there are certain uh, mutual inhibition of these wake and sleep regulating regions like help to generate the full wakefulness and sleep with rapid, rapid transition between the two sleeps, NREM and REM. Besides that, some homeostatic sleep factors like which we call somnogens are also produced in the brain by the overactivity and more energy requirement and especially at the time when there is a long wakefulness. And these substances are known as the aninosin, cytokines like interleukin 1 beta, TNF alpha, prostaglandin PGD2 and nitric oxide. And all they are known as somnogen because they produce sleep or facilitate sleep after long wakefulness. So there are drugs which can target them uh, during the situations where there is a sleeplessness. So a broad understanding of all these transmitters, mechanism involved in the wake sleep cycle allow clinicians and researchers to better understand the drugs, lesions and neurologic diseases of the sleep and wakefulness and consequently they are used to rationalize the pharmacotherapy of the sleep disorders. Clinical pharmacology of sleep medicine can be loosely classified into drugs aimed at treating sleepless, uh, sleepiness that is hypersomnia, Ac that is excessive daytime sleepiness, narcolepsy, catalepsy, shift work disorder, jet lag, sleeplessness that is insomnia, sleep related movement disorders and there is obstructive sleep apnea which is the main theme of this program. Although most of the drugs are available for by prescription only, the stimulants, caffeine and the antihistamines, diphenhydramine are common over the counter options for each and every one for using in the sleepiness or sleeplessness respectively. The primary hyper, so we go to for the excessive sleepiness uh, treatment which is uh, important at the time when there is a increased uh, sleepiness. So primary hypersomnias are uncommon compared to disorders of which include sleepiness as a secondary symptom to sleep disruption. 
When the patient reports sleepiness, it is clinical to investigate, uh, it is important to investigate potential primary causes such as sleep apnea or insomnia. Pain syndromes, mood disorders, and general medical problems may be comorbid with sleep apnea or disruptive sleep. However, residual daytime symptoms persist in some patients despite optimized management of the potential primary causes, leading to consideration of stimulant agents in the appropriate clinical situations. Narcolepsy catalepsy. Narcolepsy is a rare disabling disorder affecting about 25 over 1 lakh persons and characterized by excessive daytime sleepiness, abnormal rapid eye movement, sleep manifestation including cataplexy that is sudden loss of the muscle tone triggered by these strong emotions, direct transition from wakefulness to REM sleep that it dreams, sleep paralysis, inability to move following the awakening from the uh, REM sleep and hypnagogic hallucinations. Hypnagogic hallucinations occur around sleep onset or awakening or sleep paralysis. Narcolepsy is caused by deficient neurotransmission by orexins because orexins are the neuropeptides which are involved in controlling all neurotransmitters which are excitatory and responsible for wakefulness. They are released by the neurons from the lateral hypothalamus with widespread projections namely to aminergic neurons, histamine, DA, dopamine, norepinephrine, uh, 5 HT and known to be involved in the control of the wakefulness. For example, histaminergic, norepinergic, dopaminergic. Histaminergic neurons seem to be even necessary for waking action of the eruptions. And reduced levels of the histamine in the cerebrospinal fluid have been reported in the nar narcoleptic patients recently. The drugs which are used for the treatment of the hypersomnia can be divided into different groups. One is stimulant acting on the norepinergic dopaminergic system. The one group of the drugs are known the amphetamines. This is methamphetamine, dextroamphetamine. They are used for the excessive sleepiness such as narcolepsy and phase shift disorder of the sleepiness. Methylphenidate, dimethylphenidate, then modafinil, armodafinil, all these three they act via increased release of the dopamine as well as norepinephrine in the brain. Besides modafinil which acts only on dopamine and norepinephrine, amphetamine not produces derangement of the neurons of both dopaminergic and amphetamine, uh, the, uh, 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 norepinephrine and thereby they cause continuous release and leading to reinforcement of the behavior and addiction or habituation is very common with amphetamines rather than modafinil or methylphenidate. These drugs are used in narcolepsy, modafinil is preferred because it decreases daytime sleepiness without affecting nighttime sleepiness and when used for shift work sleep disorder, it increased deep latency during nighttime shifts. Modafinil or armodafinil showed less need for recovery sleep after sleep depri deprivation and fewer sleep disturbances with no REM sleep deficit. Caffeine, we know is it present in the various cola drinks, soda drinks, health drinks and also acts as an stimulant. And today we know the mechanism is by antagonism of the adenosine. Adenosine as we have just seen, there is one of the somnogens which acts via inhibition of the histaminergic and monomergic pathways. So caffeine by inhibiting the uh, activity of adenosine increases the wakefulness producing monomines like histamine, noradrenaline, dopamine. Then sometimes we use antidepressants. Antidepressants although we know they produce depression and also sedation but they are used to promote the increased noradrenergic tone especially amitriptyline, protriptyline with or without gamma hydroxybutyrate that is sodium oxybutate which is used to improve nighttime sleep in narcoleptics because they have got day uh, uh, sleepiness. Now other newer therapies which include pharmacological agonist of the orexin because orexin is a neuropeptide which is stimulatory. So orexin uh, have got two receptors OR1 and OR2. Now there are some receptors, uh, some drugs which are act as an agonist on the orexin receptors which are in the pipeline of clinical evaluation. 
and I have not named them because they are all coded compounds. But there is a drug which is known the Almo Rextend, which is not an agonist but rather an antagonist. And another compound, MK4305, which is a coded compound, is in the development for the treatment of the hypersluminous. Then other options are transplantation of the orexin neurons or orexin gene therapy because these are the ones which are destroyed during the narcolepsy catalepsy syndrome. Histamine H1 receptor antagonist or inverse agonist like cypro, cyproxyphen, triplosin and pitolicent are under development and they are, have gone under um, uh, phase 3 clinical trials and have been recommended for the treatment of the uh, excessive daytime sleepiness observed with narcolepsy. The awake, promo awake promoting effect is likely mediated by increased histaminergic tone as the response to the H3 antagonist is absent in animals which have got uh, loss of the H1 receptors. Now we come to the insomnia, excessive sleeplessness. Insomnia is defined as the insufficient quality or quantity of sleep and is most prevalent sleep disorder. Approximately 50% of the adults complain occasional insomnia and 10 to 15% chronic insomnia. Insomnia can involve difficulty, falling asleep, staying asleep or poor quality of sleep. Insomnia can be considered a constellation of symptoms with variety of underlying causes. As a symptom, it can be secondary to disorders of mood, pain or variety of other neurological and general disorders. Insomnia is classified into two groups, comorbid with other psychological functions or primary where the secondary causes are not there. Consequences of insomnia include daytime sleepiness, lack of energy and cognitive impairment. Insomnia may even be even precipitate or accompany the development of psychiatric symptoms. One of the most intriguing yet poor understood aspect of the insomnia is the misperception phenotype persons in which patients underestimate their sleep times compared to the objective measurements in the sleep lab. Insomnia can also be presented feature of circadian phase disorder most commonly delayed by circadian phase and especially seen in the jet lag. The primary challenge with regards to the diagnosis and treatment of the insomnia is that both depend entirely on the clinical history with no basis of objective testing. Pharmacological agents which are used in the treatment of insomnia falls into various groups and all they are known as the sedative hypnotics. First group is the benzodiazepine and another is the non-benzodiazepine that is they have got activities similar to the benzodiazepine but the structure is not benzodiazepine and they are also known as the uh, jet drugs that is jaliplone, jopiclone, as jopiclone, jolpidem. Benzodiazepine group of drugs everybody is acquainted with them alprazolam, diazepam, flunitazepam, nitrazepam etc. Then another group is the antihistamines H1 receptor uh, histamine blocking agents, diphenhydramine, phenaramine, chlorphenaramine. Then there are drugs which are known as the melatonin or melatonin uh, derivatives. Remelteon is an agent which has been shown to be uh, M1 and M2 agonist like melatonin and 3 to 16 times more potent and is used in the uh, diurnal sleep disorders and jet lag sleep disorders. Then another group is 5-HT drugs, retensorine which is antagonist of the 5-HT2A and 5-HT2C receptors because 5-HT is one of the important uh, wakeful producing amines in the brain. Then we have got antidepressants such as tricyclic antidepressant, amitriptyline, nortriptyline and you will be surprised that they are used both for the hyperinsomnia as well as insomnia because of their activity depending because when there is a insomnia they produce sleep. When there is a hypersomnia because of that there is a daytime uh, sleepiness so they antagonize that. So selective serotonin inhibitors like fluoxetine, fluoxetine, cetylpram, trazodon which is a special agent which has got not only uptake inhibitory activity but also uh, having the antagonism of the 5-HT1A and 5-HT2A and alpha-1 receptors. Then there is a new drug agomelatin which is a melatonin derivative which has got the unique property of 
having melatonin receptor agonistic activity and serotonergic 5-HT2C receptor antagonist. And this is very good agent for the treatment of the uh, jet lag sleep and diurnal uh, disturbance in the sleep. A variety of other compounds used for treat insomnia antagonize histaminergic and orexinergic wake promoting nuclei and compound a, uh, is the Elmore extent. Have been shown to enhance both NREM and REM sleep and reduce wakefulness in animals, healthy humans and insomnia patients. Now there are some situations which we discuss specially under this topic. The, the, the one is the sleep related movement disorders. Restless legs syndrome or periodic limb movement activity uh, in the sleep are the most common movement disorders resulting in the sleep disturbances. The former is a strictly clinical diagnosis while the latter is a polysomnographic finding. PLM may also be seen in narcolepsy, sleep apnea and REM behavior disorder. Both are treated similarly often beginning with the investigation for iron stores serum ferritin and oral depletion of the iron because it has been shown that iron is a very important cofactor for the uh, rate limiting step tyrosine hydroxylase for the synthesis of the dopamine. So if there is an iron that is, the dopamine is reduced and because of that iron repletion is very important so that dopaminergic uh, system can work properly. Then other drugs which are used for this purpose are dopaminergic um, agonist what that is Prenipixol. Uh, yes. Could you wind up in the next two minutes, please? Okay, sir. Ropinarol, which are off-level use for the class of agents. Then REM behavior disorder is most commonly treated with the hypnotic benzodiazepines, that is chlorazepine, which is the first chlorazepam, which is the uh, first choice, or melatonin treatment prior to the bedtime. Uh, then uh, I would like to stress on the RBD uh, sleep behavior disorder because uh, it is more common in people aged 50 years and it has been shown that RBD has been shown to precede and predict the later development of the neurodegenerative diseases known as sign nucleopathies including Parkinson's disease, dementia with Levi's bodies disease or multiple system atrophy. This suggests that a neurodegenerative process is in generation of the idiopathic RBD, presumably occurring in the brain stem, REM muscle latonia, generation Jones, and in the dorsolateral pons and medulla. RBD may be an important marker, biomarker, allowing early stage preventive treatment for syn nucleopathies. Since RBD often occurs many years earlier than the other conditions. The acute form of the RBD is managed by withdrawal of the offending medication, that is antidepressants, whereas the chronic form can well be managed symptomatically by benzodiazepines, that is clonazepam, which we have already seen is the first drug of choice, and then malotinine treatment. So this is very important to treat the RBD condition because it is a predisposing factor for various degenerative diseases, including the Parkinson's at a later stage. Now, treatment of the obstructive sleep apnea will be dealt in detail by other learning speakers. But only thing which I will like to uh, stress is the uh, drugs which are used for this purpose. Uh, pharmacological interventions to treat OSA increase the activity of the upper airway dilator muscles as well as the ventilator drive. For example, norenergic drug, protriptyline, serotonergic agents like phloxetine, peroxetine, progestogens, and bronchodilators like salbutamol. Besides the standard treatment using the CPAP, that is continuous positive airway pressure. So these drugs can act as an adjuvant with the other uh, therapy therapies which will be discussed by the uh, learned speakers later on. Then post-traumatic stress disorder which is uh, related to the nightmares and for this purpose we use benzodiazepines, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor that is atypical depressants like nephazodone, trazodone, beta blockers and alpha adrenergic antagonist prejucine. Prejucine is very important for this purpose because it reduces the incidence of the nightmares and bad dreams in this situation. Thank you very much. <laughs>